Hi guys, this is Jenny from Create Right Meow, and this is another one of my doll repaint videos. Uh, this is another Retro Dolls US collab uh, for the month of November, and this time I actually used Retro Dolls hair, which is great. Um, uh, this one was to make a Monster High doll into your favorite Barbie. So uh, I had so many Barbies when I was a kid, so I was pretty excited about this one. And uh, my favorite was this one called Cheerleader Courtney. And she was one of the little sister dolls, um, like the teenager dolls. She was Skipper's friend and she had long brown hair and I had long brown hair. Um, so she was my favorite. <laughs> um, so anyways, I wanted to make uh, this Cleo doll into Cheerleader Courtney. So <laughs> I... Uh, I really was excited because I got my first container of epoxy sculpt or containers. So uh, I really love like the body modifications that like people have been doing. Um, and especially like finding out from uh, Delightful's Halloween episode um, that you can use hot glue to build up underneath the epoxy sculpt. Um, so you don't need as much epoxy sculpt and you can like save it and then you just put like a, a layer over top which is really cool uh, because epoxy sculpt is super expensive <laughs> and hard to find. So that's what I'm doing here. I am making my cheerleader some boobs. Um, <laughs> and uh, when I first showed this to my mom she was like oh I don't know if you should post this part because those are super unrealistic. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. She's a doll, mom. <laughs> but um, it actually works really well, um, especially with like the outfit I ended up making for her. Um, yeah, it just, you don't really even notice how, how large they are. In the future, I probably won't make them quite so big. It was, it was a learning curve and uh, she ended up curvier than I anticipated. So the thing I like about sculpting with the hot glue is that you can use like the the tip of the hot glue gun um, to sort of like smooth things out and, and shape them. It's a pretty forgiving medium and it's very cheap. <laughs> the only thing is make sure you don't leave your hot glue gun plugged in when you have three cats who like to bat it around when you're sleeping. <laughs> made that mistake for the first time ever and <laughs> thankfully I didn't burn my house down oh yeah there was my cat um, but yes always make sure you unplug them um and here I'm going in with uh it's like a polishing wheel on my dremel it just gives it like some extra smoothness it smooths it out a little more and it actually like it like melts the glue and like makes it so it's easier to make it like a seamless transition to the plastic and also, I just really love using my new Dremel. It's fun. It's a lot more effective too for um, like buffing the body, for doing like body blushing and contouring and stuff. Okay, so now that I have buffed the body, um, I did put a coat of paint over the hot glue, which is totally unnecessary. I'm not really sure what I was thinking because I'm going to cover it with epoxy sculpt. Um, but, uh, I guess if I didn't have the epoxy sculpt, that's sort of like the step I take, but it was unnecessary. Uh, anyways, this is my very first container of epoxy sculpt, or my first, you know, duo containers. I've worked with clay a lot, and yeah, this is so similar. The only thing is, um, it's kind of like weird when it starts drying on your hand, which I think you're supposed to wear gloves with it, but gloves are super annoying to try to <laughs> wear when you're sculpting anything um, especially when you're not used to wearing gloves <laughs> so yeah I'm just doing like as thin a layer of the epoxy sculpt as I can to go over because it is a lot smoother of a surface and also you can like sand it and yeah it's just it's cool stuff you can use, I just put a bit of water on my desk there because you use water just to sort of smooth out the surface. And epoxy sculpt's really cool because it takes, I think it's like four hours. I think mine took a little longer than that, but um, 
around four hours to dry and then um once it's dry you can it, it's just like it's like plastic so yeah you can sand it and carve it and and it's like such a smooth surface like um i did the the body modifications using just like an air dry clay on um the one draki laura doll that i did um that was like one of the super cheap ones uh, to see, like, I wanted to see how much I could change her <laughs> and how cool I could make her. I, like, changed her shoes and, like, yeah, made her, her some breasts. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I had made them out of air-dry clay, and they just weren't the right texture. They were just sort of, like, weird, and it was sort of like stone. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it just didn't work. Um, the epoxy sculpt worked much better. Okay, so I didn't record my process of the rerouting um, because boring, <laughs> but uh, it took me probably five hours to do the whole head. Um, and yeah, I used like what was it, brown sugar and hazelnut. Those are the two saran hairs that I had used. And I just wrapped it all. And yeah. Uh, to protect it while I was doing the face up, which is my favorite part. So I always start with like contouring. I do pastels first. I know some people do the pencil crayons first, but I like doing contouring first. Sort of helps me once I have everything contoured to know where exactly to put the solid lines with the pencils. So I did use like um, a reference photo of the actual Barbie doll to work from and uh, it, her Barbie's face is very different than Monster High faces especially Cleo I'm not sure if you can see already her face um, I actually went in with the Dremel tool and I tried to make her eyes uh, wider and her nose um, like a little more like buttonish, like cute. Um, I also made her lips a little uh, smaller and more sort of like puckered looking. Is <laughs> what was my attempt, anyways. Which is really cool. Like I love that you can do that. Like you don't, you're not, you don't have to stick with the face sculpt of the doll. You can go in and you can change it. You can shrink it with the acetone and you can shape it differently and uh, you can sand parts away and add other parts and it's just it's really cool to be able to do that so and that's something I want to work on more as I continue making dolls is really making their faces really unique I mean they're already unique when you make them you know like that's the whole point of the one-of-a-kind dolls but to be able to give them their very own face sculpt, basically, is uh, it's just really cool. So yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but her eyes are... I made her eyes wider by just sort of like sanding down underneath. And then every time the camera cuts, I'm um, spraying her with Mr. Super Clear, of course. And I didn't show the process of me... Um, painting and blushing the body once the epoxy sculpt was dry uh, but I will include like a picture here just so you can see the process or how the process worked and I think it worked out really well it's definitely my best body sculpt and blushing so far yeah something I find that makes like a big difference is going in and adding like layers and layers and layers of the pastels rather than just trying to build it up all at once you know I'll build it up until it doesn't you know it's not really making a difference or it's just sort of moving the color around on the vinyl and then I'll take her out to the balcony and spray her and wait for her to dry and then come back in and add more and I mean a lot of the doll customizers have suggested this in the past and then it was only once getting like the Mr. Super Clear that I've actually noticed, like how big of a difference that makes in just like adding depth to the face. I think with my old sealant, it just didn't quite have the same effectiveness, didn't work quite the same. But you can see like every time 
I've sort of cut away to go and spray it. I come back and add more and it's just like brings a whole new level to the face. I cut out a lot of the face up because I still haven't quite gotten the hang of keeping the doll under the camera so you can see the process. Uh, it, uh, I always, I bring it up closer to my face and then you can't see what I'm doing. So I just cut that stuff out. But you can see here I've added like the eyebrows and um, started to build up the eyes and adding like the pink to the lips and pink to the cheeks. Because yeah, Barbies have a lot of uh, pink blush usually. I was pleased with how, like, cutesy she was ending up looking. Um, because yes, Cleo isn't so cutesy. <laughs> yeah, she's not so cutesy. She's got, like, a, a like harsher features, you know, very angular, um, which is really, really cool. But as I sort of started working on this one, I was, I was thinking that's not really going to work for this cutesy Barbie face, right? So... But I do think it ended up working out really well. Just with the contouring and the blushing and the big eyes. And yeah, cheerleader Courtney has big blue eyes. I even tried to give her like dimples. Okay, so here I'm going in um, with my Pearl X powders mixed with a bit of glossy varnish. And um, I go over uh, the lips with like a pink... Pearl X powder with the glossy varnish and then I'm going in with the eyes with a blue and a yellow and just sort of, you know, like adding some shiny eye detail. And I really love the effect of mixing the Pearl X powder with the glossy varnish. A lot of things you can mix the Pearl X powder with sort of, it takes away from its, its sheen. It's like glimmer and uh, yeah, the the varnish doesn't it, it maintains it even if you spray it with another like a couple layers of mr super clear it still has that shine which is really cool and i'm just sort of like building up the black a little a little darker sometimes i have to do that with the acrylic paint because it doesn't quite get dark enough or as dark as i want it with the pencil crayon i'll go over a little of um how i made the outfit just because i do not show my process for that so um, after looking at the picture of cheerleader, Cor cheerleader Courtney and also just sort of like remembering what her outfit was like because I played with her a lot <laughs> and um, I, I started thinking about different Monster High outfits that were sort of similar and I came up with um, Katrine Demuse outfit. I think it's her, I think it's just her regular outfit like her, her signature doll outfit and it's the little top with the ruffle sleeves and then a little skirt. Um, and that's like super similar to what Courtney's outfit was like. So I took Katrine's outfit. Um, thankfully I've got a few of them. And uh, I cut it apart at the seams and laid it all out and made myself a pattern. And I proceeded to make the clothes out of similar color fabrics as the original doll. And then I tried this shirt on, and uh, of course it didn't fit because I had made the body modifications. <laughs> so I had to start all over with the shirt. But that's fine. One of my other Monster Highs can wear a cute purple shirt. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I altered the pattern a little um, of the of the top, <laughs> and then that worked a little bit a little bit better. And then I went in and uh, all those little, um, you'll see there's like, I, I added silver accents and each one of them is like nail art <laughs> that I have glued on individually. And you can see here I'm using 
three colors of wool uh, to make her pom-poms. And these are like uh, cheerleader Courtney's original pom-poms. I actually have them still. Um, so yeah, I just sort of mixed up all the colors and then put an elastic in the middle. And then I just sort of um, brush the yarn out to give it like a big poofy pom-pom feel because I wanted I wanted her to have like big big you know fluffy pom-poms not just the little ones that the original doll had come with so yeah like I said this is a retro dolls us collab so um, I'll definitely post this doll on Instagram and use the hashtag and I'm not sure if anyone else was doing it um, but if they are, uh, I'll add links to them, um, down below if they have any YouTube videos. Otherwise, I'll just, um, you can follow the hashtag on Instagram. There is the final face-up with the glossy varnish and the eyelashes. And here is the doll. <laughs> so you can see she's got the long re-rooted hair and she's got the little C on her chest for Courtney. Um, I actually was able to fit, um, Barbie's Reebok shoes on her, um, and they're not like a cheerleader one, they were just ones that I had had, um, from a doll lot, so I took the little plastic parts out and then just put the, the shoes on her feet, and she's actually wearing one thing from the original Courtney, uh, which is the socks that are under the shoes, you can see the toes sticking out, <laughs> those are original cheerleader Courtney socks, which I thought was cool. <laughs> So thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Bye!